Let's configure virtual local area network on Microtik RB260 GSP. In this video, configure VLANs on Microtik RB260 GSP. So first, we will look into quick RB260 GSP specifications. Next, we will check on our demonstration topology on how we interconnect our RB260 GSP and with our test clients. And then we'll proceed to show you the configuration of the corresponding demonstration topology. So let's have some quick specs on our Microtik RB260 GSP. As you can see, you have the front view picture or image of this Microtik RB260 GSP. So it is powered by Microtik switch os or swos the switch has five gigabit ports and out of these five gigabit ports four of which are passive poe ports so it could support power over ethernet connection also at the back of the switch you have one sfp port so if you have some small form factor pluggable transceivers for example you have the microtik direct attach cable so this switch could be able to support it and it's recommended for inter switch connectivity so we have here the topology for our demonstration as you can see we have two rb260 gsp switches at the back of the switch, there is one SFP port. So they are interconnected by one Microtik direct attach cable. So for this SFP port on both switches, we will configure trunk configuration. And for our test clients, they will be connected on Ether 2. So on two switches, they will be connected on Ether 2 and they will be configured with a VLAN access port assignment of VLAN ID 10. We could also test to assign it to a different VLAN ID to check whether our test clients will be able to communicate or not. For our demonstration, let us check first if our devices are available so our first microtik rb260 gsp can be accessed via any web browser okay so i have already changed the ip of the first rb260 gsp and that is from 192.168.88.1 to 192.168.88.6 so the username and password is still default it's admin and without any password so let us sign in to our switch as you can see we have successfully signed in to our switch and you see the operating system microtik swas under the system menu we could see the static IP address assigned to this switch and that is changed from the default 192.168.88.1 to 192.168.88.6. The identity is changed into MT6 and the rest are in their default configuration. One thing to note in this demonstration is under upgrade menu. You could see that the current installed version is 2.12. At this point of time, this is the latest version. So for our demonstration purposes, I'm currently using version 2.12. Let's log in to our second switch. So I've also changed the IP from 88.1 into 192.168.88.7. And the username and password are still under default. If we go to the system menu, you could see that the static IP address was changed as well as the identity. However, the rest of the settings are in their default configuration. 
if we go to the upgrade menu you could also see that i have a matching currently installed version or firmware version that is also 2.12 for this particular switch for our test clients i have microtik hub ac light so this acts as pc number one or client number one so let's try to connect and see what are the settings inside for our test clients i have microtik hub ac light so this acts as pc number one or client number one so let's try to connect and see what are the settings inside so let's click connect in this microtik hub ac light acting as a test client pc1 so what was changed is the system identity which is which is pc1 and the ip address of the ether one is 192.168.10.100 slash 24 so this ether one is connected to the port number two of one of our rb 260 gsp switch wherein we will configure a vlan configuration for our client or test client number two so we have a hop light this time so let's try to connect and see what's inside this microtik hop light so let's click connect okay so under system identity so the identity is change pc2 and the ip address ether1 is this time 192.168.10.200 slash 24 so this will be connected on our second microtik switch or rb260 gsp one thing to note under the bridge interface so the member ports under the bridge interface so we have a bridge and the port members for this bridge is ether 2 3 4 and wyland 1 so thing to consider or thing to take note is ether 1 is not a member of this bridge but again this is for test client only we would only want our microtik hub light be able to connect or communicate to the other test client which is the hub ac light and be able to ping the 192.168.10 that 100 address on the other side let's configure our first microtik switch so i will re-log in so you have two important menus in vlan configuration you have vlan and you have vlans so first we'll do the vlan under the ingress group or category we have vlan mode vlan receive default vlan id force vlan id and you have the port one to port number five as well as the sfp we will just configure port number two since our test client is connected on port number two so we have to change the default vlan id from vlan id 1 to vlan id 10 so i have to type vlan id 10 in the default vlan id setting of port number two and the rest will just configure them or the vlan mode will configure them after we configure other vlan settings so for now the changes are pending so we need to click the apply all to commit to the changes next we go to the vlans menu so as you can see there are no vlan id under the vlans menu so we need to append to add a new record or add a new entry here so click append so under the vlan id we will supply or type in vlan 10 so let's leave the IVL, IGMP snooping as default. We will not touch port number one since our test client is connected on port number two. So we will configure an access port on this particular interface. So for our options, we have leave as is, always strip, 
add if missing and not a member. So for the purposes of our demonstration, since we will configure it as an access port, we will add always trip or we will select the always trip setting for this port number two. Then we will configure the SFP port. Remember, the two switches are interconnected to one another via the small form factor pluggable direct attach cable. So you have to configure the SFP as a trunk port. So for a trunk port configuration in Microtik, so you'll configure it as add if missing. If you have more VLAN ID to add, for example, you have VLAN 20, you have VLAN 30. So you'll click insert here to add more VLAN and assign which are your access ports and your trunk ports. So after that, after you add more VLANs, you'll click the apply all to commit to the changes. We have click apply all, although we have only one VLAN ID added under VLANs. So next is we go back to VLAN menu and under port number two, we will now enable the VLAN. Under port number two, VLAN mode is strict or enabled. So we'll select strict. And under SFP, we will select the strict as well. So as always, any settings that are changed, these are pending until we click apply. So we'll click apply all to commit the changes. So I will do the same on switch number two or MT7, that is 192.168.88.7. So I will log in, I'll go to VLAN, and the test client number two is still connected on port number two. So I could uh, change this VLAN to the same VLAN ID 10, and leave the SFP port as it is. So click apply all, okay. So I'll go to VLANs, and append to add a new entry on this VLAN. So VLAN ID is 10, port number two is always strip, and SFP is add if missing. So always strip, access port, SFP is trunk port. So if you have more VLANs to add, click insert. However, for this case, we have only one VLAN. So click apply all, we go back to VLAN, menu under port number two we will select strict and on the sfp we will select strict as well and if you have any additional if none click apply all to commit to the changes let us now perform some verification test on our test clients so we log in to our pc1 and let's perform a ping test so it's under tools, ping, and we ping on the the other side. So that is 192.168.10.200. So if you could see the address or the IP address for this client is 10.100. So remember, we will source our ping in the interface of Ether1. All right, let's click start. And I will leave this ping as continuous. So it will perform ping until we click stop. So our VLAN is initially working since we never perform any change on VLAN. So to confirm it's that our VLANs are clearly working, I will configure on the port 2 assignment to put it on a different VLAN. So since this is doing a continuous ping, so it will show a request timeout or destination unreachable or any form that is not in reply of the particular 10.200 address. Okay, so we are inside one of the switches. So what we can do to fully confirm that our VLAN is working, so we could change this VLAN to a different VLAN ID number. So this time we'll put it to 20 and we'll click apply all and see 
under our test client if the ping test is successful or not. So by right, it should not be working because we are on switching and VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 would not be able to communicate unless the help of a router. All right. I have the PC1's win box open. So as you can see, the ping is still successful to PC number 2. And we haven't clicked apply all to commit to the pending changes. So let us take a look what's the effect once we click apply all. And if there is any change on the ping test. So now let's click apply all. And let's open our win box. So as you can see, once we change it to a different VLAN, now the ping test or the ping connection to the PC number 2 is unsuccessful. So there is now timeout. So if we want to revert back to the correct VLAN, so click apply all. Let's take a look at what's the effect. So now the ping is resumed and there is now a reply from the PC number 2. So in this video, configure VLANs on Microtik RB260GSP. So we begin with some quick specifications of our Microtik RB260GSP switch. We presented our demonstration topology wherein we have two Microtik switch interconnected by an SFP connection. So using the Microtik direct attach cable. And each of the switch has a test client connected to port number 2 on a VLAN ID number 10. So we then proceeded with the VLAN configuration. So for our Microtik RB260 GSP switch, so we will be able to configure or administer it via a browser. So we go to its static IP addresses and log into the browser. So we configure under two menus, VLAN and VLANs menu. So we change the default VLAN ID to VLAN ID 10 for port number two and we leave the SFP VLAN ID as is. Next, we go to VLANs menu and add VLANs there. So for our case, we only have VLAN 10. So for port number 2, it's always strip. And for SFP, the setting will be add if missing. Then we go back to the VLAN menu. And for the VLAN mode, we change it to strict on both port number 2 and SFP. Finally, we have tested on our clients. So if they are on the same VLAN ID, they will be able to communicate. So PC1 will be able to communicate to test client number 2. However, when we change the VLAN ID from 10 to 20, so the ping test is unsuccessful, so therefore when the devices are on different VLAN, they won't be able to communicate unless there is a presence or a help of a router. So I hope you find this video helpful on your VLAN deployments and thank you for viewing.